Hey folks, welcome to Virginia. I'm on a little bit of a road swing here, visiting a buddy of mine. Um, I'm at Beaver Creek uh, Reservoir in, I believe, Beaver Creek Park. Um, kind of near Charlottesville, Virginia, but not uh, in Charlottesville proper. Uh, this place has bass, crappie. We're going for bass for now. We might go for panfish smaller panfish later. Uh, I've got a like a sexy shad pattern uh, chatterbait on there with a uh, you know soft plastic swim bait and uh, I'm just gonna explore a little bit today. Don't know much about this lake. If it's any good what to expect here. close spot to where I'm hanging out this, this these couple of days. All right, I feel like this part, this place, this spot right here, is a little too sunny for the middle of the afternoon. Of course, I never get an early start out here, so we're gonna walk around, try to find something a little shadier. Okay, this, I just found this secret little path. It was blocked by some tree branches, but this looks promising. Leads down to this little spot here. A lot of spider webs around. Now this is definitely a popular spot right here. I might just throw a Senko on for a second. See what we can get out of that. Looks like there will be these nice little trails all through the woods so that's good brought the kitchen sink today, plus some new stuff, because I really didn't know what to expect. Let's just go with a real simple, wacky-rigged Senko. Stick to these little shallow spots. I wonder this little bush looks kind of cool. Might be too close to shore, but we're about to find out. Oh, I have a fish. Amazing. Well, he shook the Senko, but that was an immediate, that was my first cast over here. Ooh, these Virginia fish. Very aggressive. Okay. Just gonna let him, it's like a toddler, you know, just let him get it out of his system. Hey, first Virginia bass ever. Just chill out, buddy. We're gonna get you good as new. There we go. Okay. About 12 inches, kind of lean, but healthy. Um, maybe maybe a pound, about a pound. Not bad. All right, well, there's a the fish. See you later, friend. Okay, this is a good spot, too. I'm on the other side now. I started, like, straight across. It's a deep little dark hole here. There we go. Another small bass. Smaller than my last one. Well, he shook the worm, but I can probably find it over there. Oh, he actually got himself free. Just calm down a little, man. I'm the one getting you back in the water. Damn. This guy's got some pretty sandpapery, bristly, uh, you know, Tooth patches here. All right, little guy. How's it going? Oh, did you just miss one? Yeah, you made. Ah, <laughs> jeez. Oh, Can't believe you did that. <laughs> Sorry. 
Yeah, I just caught that little guy right over here. Yeah, no, I lost him. I, I wasn't paying any attention, but he was uh, a <laughs> little. Teen. Yeah. Do they get big in this lake? I've never been here before. Oh, I just caught a four pounder. No way. That, I'm from up north, so four pounds is about my, my personal best right there. Well, good luck. Oh, wow, that would be... <laughs> well, thank you anyway. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm visiting a friend here, but I live in Yonkers, New York. There we go. <clears throat> Number three. All about the same size. This guy kind of swallowed it, but I think I can get it. Oh simple. Tiny guy. I've said it before, Gary Yamamoto is a genius. Coming up with this recipe that makes the worms sink with a good rate, but also makes them fall apart really quickly. So, you know, you got to keep buying more. And they're pretty expensive. Now, of course, I do know about the O-ring trick, but I never went out and got O-rings. By the way, guys, interesting thing about Virginia um, and bass fishing, most lakes, some of them have special regulations, but most, including I think this one, no size limit on bass. I think it's fi a five daily, but no size limit. Sometimes there's like slot limits and stuff for special watersheds, but it's surprising because I feel like they like to you know, most states like to try to protect the, the littler, littler ones. That was another fish, by the way. Okay, so retying, but I think this is a good opportunity to uh, stop it with those octopus hooks. These are like four aught, um, you know, like worm hooks, and we're going to just do a weightless Texas rig. Less chance of snagging on tree limbs, for example, too. Palomar knot, of course. It's pretty much all I tie these days. Okay, guys, I'm a little out of breath. Realized I just forgot my leather, Leatherman, the very first place I stopped. So I just ran and got it, and now I'm out of breath and very thirsty. Nothing to drink. Smart man. Okay guys, let's see how the, uh, the weightless Texas is going to do. Oops, that doesn't count. First one I got. Excuse me. Good, how are you? Question. No size limit on bass in this lake, right? Yeah, I, I mean, normally I always catch and release, but I, I have like a bleeder on my hands, so I, uh, you know, I, I think I read that, it's weird, because I'm from up north, there's always size limits, but I read that in most Virginia lakes, there's no size limit. No, that's, that's not true. It goes by lake, and this might be one of them. Yeah, okay. No I guess I better just let them back just in case then. Yeah, I'm from oh, okay, yeah, uh, New York, so. <laughs> Um, you know, it's almost 12 inches. It might be 12 inches, which would probably be the size if there was one. Yeah. I mean, he's not like gut hooked, but he's bleeding a lot. Yep. Yeah, on all these like underhanging bushes, I mean, they're not big, but there's a lot of fish.
Alright guys, so generally I like to say don't waste the resource and harvest, but because um, I'm not 100% sure on that size rule, I'm just going to play it safe. Um, and that is what you should do in that situation. Don't just don't just take it because you feel like you're doing the right thing. There we go. Now, I think there are more poisonous snakes in Virginia than where I'm from. Jeez. I say as a cotton mouth bears down on me. Just gonna tread lightly through here. I think I found I think I found an exit. Wow. I wonder if you're gonna pick that up on film. Uh I thought maybe this was a beaver dam. Or beaver lodge I should say. Um it definitely is, because I just saw the beaver swim out. It looked like a little manatee or something. Okay, we're back to the spot where I caught my first fish. i going to try. Maybe they maybe he came back under this bush. Yep. There we go. Little guy. Got a nice cheek piercing there. Pretty, pretty good hook set for just a little dink like that. Yikes. Sorry, buddy. How hidden the uh, path is behind these branches. Okay, I've got about maybe half an hour left in my afternoon. I'm just going to put an earthworm on a size 4 hook with some split shots. Send it down with my ultralight setup. I don't know what we're going for. Catfish, perch, crappie, sunfish, bass. I don't care. But the idea, I, I want to see if I can want to eat. If anything comes up, uh, maybe this can be dinner tonight. Okay guys, the line just straightened out. Let's see what's on there. Definitely just straightened out. Might be like a catfish. Something had it for a second. Let's see if they took the worm. Oh, wait, there is something on there. There is something on there. What do we got? Nice big bluegill. That's an eater. I'll take it. Oh, yeah. He swallowed it anyway, so we'll take him. That didn't take long. This is our little pieces of bluegill. I filleted it and uh, it's been on the charcoal grill. We're keeping it super simple. We've got some aguave, or what is it? Wait a minute, here it is. We got some avocado oil, some pepper, some salt. That's really all we're using. Uh, Cooked perhaps to perfection on a charcoal grill. We'll see. It looks good. I'm waiting for a fork. One thing left to do. We're going to taste it. I guess I'll take the first taste. Now, there may be some skin, Josh. It's up to you whether you want to eat the skin or not. But, uh, 
Oh, I guess you took the first taste. Any impressions? It's delicious. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Just standard delicious. fish or? All right. We're seeing these great, there charcoal's great. That's fantastic. Took the flavor, took the flavor. I put a bunch of salt, I put more than enough salt on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what's really coming through, but not in a bad way. Not it's in just a bad like way. Super salty fish. That, that's an excellent, dude. Excellent fish, dude. I want to catch some more tomorrow. Yeah, I might want to. I might want to catch some more, more bluegill tomorrow. Yeah, that's, that's, more so than that's hiking, blue? I'd rather just like catch fish and eat them. Yeah. So Josh, this is bluegill, a very easy fish to catch, but delicious. All right. Okay, guys. Uh, I don't know if it, I'm gonna make it another video or not. I guess it depends what happens tomorrow, but we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Oh,